Well, winter did came around on AEW Dynamite, but also NXT are going straight to war games. So all of that will be discussed, reviewed, and talked about on this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Well, what an amazing week this turned out for both shows. But however, I have to get this out of the way. AEW did the most amazing show this week. The best so far I've ever seen. Winter is Coming has finally made that statement. We should have seen it coming. But they won this week. Here's the views that they won. They got 913,000 views compared from last week. 710,000 views. Now, the rate they got for the 18 to 49 demographic is a 0.42, much higher than their previous uh, rates they had in the past. But however, NXC, not so much. Their views went down from a 712,000 views to 658,000 views. But they remain low on the, the 18 to 49 demographic rate to a point. One six. Now I will explain some things that was brought upon by the Square Circle Sock Bubble in the final thoughts. So right now, let's jump in with AEW Dynamite. Winter is coming. Well, winter did come on this episode of AEW Dynamite. I'm still shaking about it. But let's start with the first match of the night. It was the Diamond, the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royale. Now, if you guys aren't familiarized, this is where they actually have many wrestlers uh, face off for the, dim uh, the Diamond Ring that is currently being held by MJF. So there was too many wrestlers. So let's just go from who got eliminated in the, in the process. We had Isaiah Cassidy, uh, Serpentico, Luther, Matt Seidel, Sean Spears, Scorpio Sky, Alex Reynolds, John Silver, Hangman Adam Page, Kip Sabian, Lee Johnson, Mark Quinn, Joey Janela, Miro, Jungle Boy, Sammy Guevara, and Morlo. So the last two competitors that remain will face off each other next week for the Diamond Ring. And that is MJF, and other than freshly squeezed himself, Orange Cassidy. This is going to be an interesting match. It was so great in the end. There's been a lot of talk that maybe MJF screwed Sammy on this one since Sammy doesn't trust MJF whatsoever. So that is something we got to pay attention in the storyline. So that we'll talk more about that a little bit. But however, when the match was won, we had the best friends coming out to celebrate, knowing that one of their closest friends has won this uh, this match. But however, there's still some unfinished business between the best friends and the w ones who claim that they are the real best friends, Miro and Kip Sabian. So let's move on to the next match we have. It's Frankie Kazarian and versus Chris Jericho. Now, this match was announced a week ago since Frankie Kazarian punched MJF in the face. But the match itself was okay. But what changes is there's turmoil now within the inner circle. MJF comes around with a towel. He saw that Frankie Kazarian put uh, Jericho in the Boston Crab. Now, he was about to toss it, but here comes Sammy Guevara to make the stop. So there's been confusion. On one side, we have Ortiz and Hager on the other. On the other side, we had MJF, Warlow, and Sammy getting in each other's face. However, the match ended where Jericho picked up the victory. But however, he was upset 
in the post match where he's saying he's sick and tired of these guys fighting each other. So he's either you, he's g giving them one week to get their act together, either work things out together, or the inner circle breaks up. Now I know there's some people have talked about this before. It's like, do we see the inner circle in the long run? Well, that seems like we're getting into that question now with the inner circle. Because, I mean, not, not to be disrespectful, but there's been questions about that. Do we really need to see the inner circle last forever? That is something that's been brought. But we'll see what happens next week when the ultimatum happens. Now, we had an interview with David Mark, Mark Vez who talked with the Young Bucks. Now, however, this thing with the Young Bucks and TH2 is taking a toll. Now, he said they laid out a match for them, saying, we'll give you guys an opportunity. You beat us in a match, you get an opportunity of the AEW World Tag Team titles. It was that simple. But, of course, they were being, uh, di uh, being disrespected by none other than the Acclaim, doing the little diss track, serving as a distraction for the Hybrid 2, to make a statement against the Bucks. But luckily they were saved by SEU members Frankie Gazarian and Christopher Daniels. So that pre pretty much ended in that way for them. So we will see the Bucks versus the TH2. If they beat them, they will get a shot of the AEW World Tag Team titles. Now the next match we have is Britt Baker versus the legit Layla Hirsch. Now this is one of those matches where Britt Baker is making a, a, a statement. Thunder Rosa doesn't belong in the AEW. She's saying she's the true role model. However much of the match, I was like, okay, it was pretty good. Not to mention Rebel being helped out. But the way the match ended was great. All of a sudden, Britt Baker won. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes Th Thunder Rosa whacking her. But Rebel, what the hell were you thinking? Try to get in her face when they separated her from Britt Baker? All of a sudden, she got suplexed by Layla Hirsch. That was amazing. I have a feeling we're going to see Rebel and Britt Baker teaming up, facing against Thunder Rosa and Layla Hirsch. That's going to be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if, if we see Layla Hirsch being under the, the, the vise, under the, the wing of Thunder Rosa. That is something that will, uh, will possibly can happen. I, I, will, I'm, I'm, I bet you it will happen. Now, the next thing we have is the so, the tag team match between Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes, along with Arn Anderson, facing off against Team Taz members, Powers House Hobbs, and Absolute Ricky Starks, along with Taz. The match was great. It's really amazing to see the feud between Team Taz and the Nightmare family, plus Darby, Going into a great direction, but however, the match ended in Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes' favors, allowing Darby Allen to pick up the pin against Ricky Stark. But however, the match the match was over, but the beatdown by Team Taz continues. Dustin Rose comes out to give out a helping hand, but however, here comes Brian Cage to even the odds. When things were seem like they're going in Team Taz's ways, lights turned off. <sighs> I'm still buzzing, shocking, and I can't believe what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sting! <laughs> yes, Sting, the icon, is back on TNT after 18 years. I was feeling the goosebumps. If you guys saw this right there, he had the most biggest pop, even though despite the fact of limited audience he still gets the pop and this is the reason this is the reason and i said this to many of my friends including my uncle sting's appearance in aew was gonna draw out the the viewership when i was seeing this i tested my friends and they're like what they're like switching the channel that is one of the things that people tell like dude sting 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 it's all over Twitter, everything, and now it's been confirmed. Officially, Sting is now signed a multi-year contract with AEW. But however, what is his role? Now, I know 
some of you are saying he he's in his 60s, J-Rod. He's in his 60s. That's true. Maybe he has room for one more match because I know some fans are saying it's a load of crap that he didn't get the, his retirement match. You know, and I get it. But think about it. What if AEW can do that? But who he will face, I don't know. But I am excited to see what's going to happen. But the best part is, after he was coming out to the ring, Team Taz took off and regrouped because you don't want to mess around with Sting. With him in a baseball bat. He looks on Arn Anderson, an old rival. Then he looks at Dustin Rhodes. Then Cody. Then Darby Allin. He went through four different generational walk. Dustin, older. No, uh, Arn Anderson, who's the much older. Dustin, Cody, Darby Allin. It's a perfect analogy. But he just looked at uh, Darby Allin, like, looking around his face. Like, you don't know what to make of it. But some of those saying they would like to see Sting be the Arn Anderson to Darby Allin. I'm all for it. I'm, how about you guys? But also, this came in today. Sting merch on Pro Wrestling Tee sold a lot. It wasn't really set less than 24 hours, but it happened. I'm not joking. I'm not BSing. It happened. So, yeah. I'm still shaking about it. But let's move on. I'm like, then we had an interview with Hikaru Shida. Who say that she's willing to put the title on the line against Abaddon. But we're starting to see a little scary part of her where she uh, is afraid of Abaddon or whatever's going on. But we'll see what happens. But we are going to see Abaddon in action next week. Now we get to the main event. This is for the AEW World Championship between Kenny Omega and the champion John Moxley. The match was amazing. But however... The outcome was unexpected. We see Kenny was hurt, but somehow Don Callis went to che check up on him because he always looked at him as an uncle. And Don Callis, who doesn't appreciate John Moxley hurting him, he just, you know, he got in the way. And somehow he slipped the microphone to Kenny and Whack John Moxley, allowing himself to win the match out of nowhere. People were in disbelief. They don't know what to make of it. Don Callis just grabbed Kenny. They took off. You see Tony Khan like what, going like, what the hell is going on here? And then all of a sudden, we want to know what was going on. And Don Callis said, all of this will be revealed on Tuesday. And we're like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? It's on Wednesday. No, on Impact Wrestling. So, the truth is now, there's been rumors circulating about a possible partnership or co collaboration or crossover, however you guys want to talk, between AEW and, and, and Impact Wrestling. This is going to be interesting. I can't wait to see this happen. So I'm still buzzing over it. But right now, let's continue on with this with NXT before we get to the War Games. All right, NXT is in their go-home phase to War Games. I'm excited about it. So let's start with the first thing they had is the memory of Pat Patterson. As you know, he recently passed away, which was saddened. I know a lot of wrestlers who knew him, especially those who met him. It's sad, but he will be remembered as the father of the Royal Rumble, but also one of the best intercontinental champions of all time. And all of that. Now let's get to the first match of the night. It was Damien Priest teaming up with Leon Roth against Legado de Fantasma, Santos Escobar, and Raul Mendoza. Originally, it was supposed to be uh, Joaquin Wild and Ro in it, but however, he was slammed through a the, 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 the doorway by Damien Priest to get who got in his face. But however, during the entire match, you have, uh, what's his name? Um, Johnny Gargano being there because he's claiming that 
he's going to reclaim what's his. But however, the one thing that was bizarre was seeing the ghost face. The match was great. However, I don't know what they were going with it, but it seems like things were going fine for Leon Ruff and Damien Priest. But however, when they the match was over, they see two ghost faces. The real question is, who's behind it? Last time we saw a ghost face, we saw it was Hindi Hart. Well, who could be following the Gargano way? That's another story for another time. Now, as you know, we're getting close to war games. We know that's been the men's war game is going to be epic. We just had a, last week a ladder match for the briefcase who will get advantage. Undisputed Era were undefeated in that, but this time they lost. They know it's Pat McAfee behind it. But however, they reflect everything. They are self-aware in the video package they throw in that they haven't been the same Undisputed Era that they were. But this time they know they got a lot to lose in this one. So they're showing that they have everything. They have to do whatever it takes to win. They know Pat McAfee. This is his first war games. He's not a wrestler. So that's what they see. So we'll get to that later. Now, they had thrown an interview with Candice LeRae and her team. They're saying, what do they think about the team of Shotzi Blackheart? Candice LeRae thinks that they're damaged goods. Just because she sees it, oh, I beat their asses up a week ago. That's the reason I beat them up, to ensure they won't make it to war games. Well, it appears that they are. We did saw one by one, Ember Moon goes in. So did Rhea Ripley. But however, much of the night, it was still trying to understand who is the fourth member to join uh, Team Blackheart. Well, that will be explained later on in the main event. Now, we had Cameron Grimes versus Austin Graves. As you know, Cameron Grimes, he's been right now getting disturbed with Dexter Loomis. The match was okay. I'm not going to say it was one of the best. But however, the, ma the outcome is Grimes winning the match. But he sends a message to Dexter Loomis, putting a strap on into uh, into Gray to send a message to Loomis. Now, when Gray got out of the way, jump off an angle where we can't see him what happens. Grimes pulled the strap, and what he didn't realize, it was Dexter Loomis. He got into his face again. Basically, we just been, it's now been told. This coming Sunday at War Games, it will be Dex Loomis and Cameron Grimes in a strap match. I'm excited to see where they're going to go with this one. I'm really like to see there is no way for Cameron Grimes to run or to hide. Now, next thing we have is Jake Atlas versus Tony Nese. Now, Jake Atlas hasn't been in a good winning streak, unable to capture the NXT Cruiserweight title from Santos Escobar. But this match kind of proved that he deserves another shot of the title because Santos Escobar has cheated his way through many times over, even though he claimed it was a clean match, thanks to Tweedledee and Tweedledum. But he's not... So he proved a lot. And he won the match, and he made it clear this is just the beginning, and then he'll get back into getting the NXT Cruiserweight title. I'm... This is where we're seeing, okay, he's now getting his game face. He's changing his attitude just a little bit. I'm excited where they're going to go with him on that. Then we have Pat McAfee, who saying that Undisputed Era aren't going to be rest in peace, that they're going to die. They're going to win it. They're going to prove that they are the coolest team ever. And that's what they believed. But, Pat, you can talk the talk. But... Can you walk the walk at war games? Have you ever been to war games? So, I don't know. We just got to wait and see what happens on NXT at uh, war games when we get there. Now, then we saw this crazy video. We see Boa and Zia Lee were being dunked in water, being hit by kendo sticks. 
by that mysterious figure guy who I don't know who he is. And this mysterious woman who is their master. I don't know what's that about. I don't know what to make of it. But they need to more give more clues on this one because I feel like we're a little lost where they're going to go. But yeah. Now, the next match was supposed to be Ever Rise versus Grizzled Young Veterans. But however, Grizzled Young Veterans were taken out by Imperium. Now, Imperium are not going to wait patiently in line to be in the back. Grizzled Young Veterans made it clear that they're there in NXT to make a name for themselves. But however, they're not going to allow Imperium are not going to be allowing these guys to make a run amok saying that, you know, that they're going to be number 1. They feel they are the true dominant force. So Bartell and Nightner says that Bre uh, Breezango had their fun. Now it's time for them to reclaim what's theirs. The match was so good. I enjoyed it because you got two teams who are British. It would have been gone great, but however, Everize attack both of them. Pa they, this was payback because no one is taking Everize seriously. Even Imperium and Grizzle Young Veterans were not too pleased with their... Their antics, what they just pulled. And they took off. During the commercial break, they just said, Ever Eyes rule. So basically, they're saying, they're not they're like not tolerating what Imperium did. Or Grizzle Young Veterans not taking them seriously. So, we'll see what happens next. Because this is going to be an interesting story that I'm kind of really curious to see where they're going to go. We had later another Thatch at uh, Thatch S. Thatch can. Thatch was about to. Uh, Timothy Thatcher was about to do a lecture, but however, he was interrupted by a guest lecturer, uh, Tommaso Ciampa. Thatcher doesn't want no, nothing to do with him, but Ciampa was pushing his buttons. He started a fight with him, but his student got in the way, helping him, but Thatcher actually put him to sleep. Not dead, I mean. Just put them down, all that. But the interesting is, they never posted this more to be in war games. I feel they could have done this sooner, but it didn't. So we just got to stay tuned for more what's going to happen. Now it's main event time. It's the war games for the women's match. This is for the advantage ladder match between team captain Shotzi Blackhearts and the powerhouse of Team uh, uh, Larray, Raquel Gonzalez. Gr it was a great match. All of that was going great. It seems like Shotzi was doing whatever it takes to win. But you cannot deny the strength of Raquel Gonzalez. But out of nowhere, they're like almost close to the match ending. Indy Hartwell, surprise, surprise, helped Team Larray. But something happened. When the camera panned. Where was Rare Ripley and Ender Moon? How did it get out? So the real question came, who helped them? Now the match seems like it was going great. Indy Hart was trying to grab the briefcase, but Chotzi Blackheart stopped her. Then Raquel Gonzalez actually got in the way, took her out. But however, we just uh, realized who the fourth woman was. It's none other than our current NXT Women's Champion, Io Shirai. She took out Raquel Gonzalez outside the ring. Then she took out everyone outside the ring when she does the moonsault. But however, the opening was open for her. Shotzi Blackheart grabbed the briefcase and now they got the advantage. That is a perfect ending. I'm excited for War Games. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited. So let's get to the final thoughts. Okay, here's my final thoughts. 
Well, I'm going to say it. I feel AEW has the much bigger edge because of the two surprises we had. One was being Sting, and the other one, Kenny Omega winning the title, but also showing the result of the crossover between both AEW and Impact Wrestling. That is something I feel that brought much of the edge with them. Now, you can ask, you're saying yourselves this, but why is AEW working with Impact? I thought they were rival companies. Well, here's the thing. Impact Wrestling, they're a good show. They do have a stack of women in their promotion. But however, they don't make the same kind of views that both AEW and WWE have. You can get maybe over 100,000 views or so, but it's still not enough. But it's going to be an interesting collaboration between both promotions. There, there is no rivalry with AEW or NXT or Impact Wrestling because a we've seen some wrestlers that been on Impact Wrestling: the Bucks, John Moxley, Cody, um, who else I can picture? Matt Hardy, Frankie Kazarian, and uh, Chris Fordells. The list goes on. It's great that we could see something like this. But what could we see it come out of this? What could we see? Dream matches. We do know FTR will love to face the North. That is a, a, a dream match people would want to see. And that's one of the reasons I've always noticed that. I mean, I'm all for it. But here's related to that. It appears WWE want to do the same thing, but... They want to collaborate, work with some other promotion, but but who? Who's willing to work with these guys? They already obtained Evolved, um, Insane Championship Wrestling from Scotland, Progress, and WXW. So that's one of the things that that doesn't make. There's none of the none of the major promotions are willing to work with these guys. I know Ring of Honor had their issues with WWE before because of Kyle O'Reilly. Sucked her in, breaking contract thanks to Vince McMahon for not waiting until his contract expired. But, yeah. Now, I'm going to talk about this a little bit right now about something else. Some of you guys probably ask, J-Rod, why is it NXT are not getting good on the 18 to 49 demographic? Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, squared Circle Cycle Babble just made a video that kind of explained it a bit. It kind of shows that Squared Circle Cycle Babble mentioned NXT will be nothing more than a, a, a developmental program. That's what it always be. How many times have we seen wrestlers in NXT that were called up to the main roster? We know what happens in the main draw, and that's one of the problems. NXT is not a standout sh uh, promotion. If they weren't under the WWE umbrella, then they would have done good. But however, they are. As long as that happens, it would never change. But the problem is certain aspects have changed. Like Over time in NXT, we have seen w good women wrestling down there. But all of a sudden, the good ones ended up on the main roster, and that kind of changes things, you know. And it, it's all come down to decisions made by WWE, mostly by Vince. But that's how it is. As long as that continues, NXT will not get gain, have a good uh, ratings on the eighteen to forty nine demographic unless they try to come up with something. I know that. They have their sights set, setting on Tessa Blanchard because they believe if they get her, that the ratings for the 18 to 49 demographic can rise up. Now, there's no doubt in my mind it can. But so far, we haven't heard anything. If Tessa Blanchard is planning to go to WWE to be part of NXT. Now, a part of me tells me, I don't think she's interested in going to NXT. I think she would rather go to Raw or SmackDown, but they, they need something to draw out the demographic between the 48 and the 49 demographic. That's always been that case. But 
as long as they keep doing the same old thing, if they do, if they don't come up with certain changes, then that's what's going to happen. But also the ter term, a developmental, pro uh, developmental, you know, like a rookie program or something, goes on or a minor league, however you want to call it. It continues on. Then that's what they're going to be. It it's not me saying that's what it is. It is what it is from the point of view. I'll try to put the link of that of uh, of those guys talking about it because it's kind of interesting to hear. Because you, you'll hear their point of view on this one too. And I have to agree on certain points that they developed. So I think that's it for now. So I must bid all of you guys adieu. So stay tuned for more uh, of me with more videos. We got the New Japan stuff. Uh, MLW, NXT UK, 205 Live, and of course... New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong. So I must bid all of you guys adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.